In this video, we'll make a block that sets you on fire if you walk on it. I'll say that's pretty lit. Let's see how to create that. Similar to the advanced item, for the advanced block, we also need to create a custom class. So we will do this in the block package, right click new package, custom, instead of that new Java class Firestone block. This is going to extends block, making sure that you choose net Minecraft block, not JDK Nashorn, very important, net Minecraft block, and then just click create constructor matching super, and the basic block class is now set up. Similar like in our advanced item tutorial, we can look at methods we might be able to override by putting in override. And as you can see, there are a lot of things that we can override once again. There are also a lot of things, as you can see, which are deprecated. So that's that's what this means when there's sort of a line through it. Now, what's really important is that you can actually override those. That is fine. You just can't call them. So usually deprecated methods shouldn't be overridden or used at all. In this case, as long as you're in the block or in the item class, so if you're extending the block or the item class, then even deprecated methods can be overwritten. You just should not call them anywhere else. Right, so as you've seen, there's a lot of things in there once again. And similar to the item, you can middle mouse button click on the block and actually see instead of the block class, what methods there are and anything public or protected you could overwrite. Same thing for the iForge block. These are basically additional methods that you could overwrite that Forge adds. Now for our purposes, we're going to overwrite the onEntityWalk method. So we're just going to write in onEntity and then hit tab to basically autocomplete it. And what we want to do is we want to lit the entity on fire. Now the great thing is if you've seen the previous tutorial with the Firestone, we've actually created a method for that. Now we can call Firestone dot light entity on fire. We can pass the entity and then whatever duration we want. So let's say five seconds. And that's actually how easy it is. Most of the work, of course, was done in the Firestone class. And now, of course, we could also middle mouse button click on the light entity on fire method and actually see it is simply calls entity dot set fire with the number of seconds here. And while you could put that in there as well, I do believe that light entity on fire is something that is just a little bit clearer. But instead of just overriding the on entity walk method, we're also going to take a look at the two methods that are basically the most requested of them all. So right clicking the block and left clicking the block. And then of course, inside of those methods, you can do basically whatever you want. You can take a look at whether or not the player is holding an item, a specific item, what the player is doing and all sorts of other things. The right clicking method is on block activated. And as you can see, this is one of those deprecated methods, but not to worry, we can actually put that in. And if you don't want these this deprecated sort of warning in here, you can put an at suppress warning up here. So suppress warnings and then deprecation. And then this will show as a normal method. Right, as you can see, it returns an action result type. You can just simply take a look at what those are. This is simply an enum, success, consume, pass, and fail. They're not too interesting for us at the moment. Just know that you can basically say, hey, whether or not this action actually has succeeded. I'll reformat this a little bit, there you go. And the first thing you wanna check inside of the onBlock activated method is whether or not the world is remote. This simply makes sure once again, so if it's not remote, that we are on the server and usually what we want to do is takes place on the server. So dropping blocks and similar things, for example, should only be done on the server and not on the client. So what is interesting for the onBlock activated method, it's actually called four times. One for the server and one for the client. And then in each of those, one for the main hand and one for the off hand. So for demonstration purposes, we're basically gonna check what hand we are, we're calling it with. So first of all, the main hand, and then we'll just put in system out print line. So we're just gonna make an output. I right clicked a Firestone block called for the main hand. And then let's just copy this, control C, control V, and then check for the off hand. And then we're gonna say called for the off hand. That looks pretty good. So th then the right clicking basically is done. And inside of the if statement, you can now basically put in whatever you want. Because you get the player entity pass here as a parameter, you can basically check anything and everything on the player. So for example, if player is actually holding a specific item, and if you right click a block, then a certain thing can happen. That is something that you can, for example, put into the onBlock activated method. Now, left clicking is done with the onBlock clicked method. Once again, as you can see, deprecated. So we'll just copy this over here. Once again, Control C, Control V. So we don't have that through line. And in this case, we'll actually not call the super here. We're just going to make sure that once again, we are not in remote. So we are on the server. And then we're simply going to print out, I left clicked a Firestone block. Just for demonstration purposes in this case, so that we can see that the onBlock click method actually works fine. 
Right, and that is basically the class done. We, of course, need to add this to the mod blocks as well. So for shorthand, once again, we're just going to copy an existing block here. And then this is going to be the Firestone block. And here as well, Firestone block. And it's it should be iron as its material. And I believe maybe a little less resistance here. Harvesting tool, pickaxe is fine. Set requires tool and harvest level 2 is all fine. That should be all fine. But the most important thing is that you change the block to the Firestone block. So this is, of course, and then of course imported. There you go. This is, of course, very important. And this can be an easy oversight, especially when you simply copy over the registration from another block registration. Make sure that this is the Firestone block. Don't forget to add the JSON files. Those are very important because we're having a basic block in the sense that there's no particular block states or anything that we need. We can simply take an existing JSON and copy it and paste it in. So this is simply done. This is done by pressing Control C and then Control V, making sure that we name this correctly, Firestone block. And then inside of here, we can just change this to Firestone underscore block Then going to block here, doing the same thing, Firestone underscore block, changing in here again, Firestone underscore block. And then one last time in the item as well, Firestone underscore block and Firestone underscore block. Let's also add the translations in our lang file. So stone Firestone underscore block. And this is going to be the Firestone block. And the last thing that we need is the texture. This is, of course, available for download in the description below. After adding everything here, let's see if it worked. Right, we find ourselves in Minecraft. As you can see, the Firestone block has been added to the game. So let's actually set it down here. And let's see if I switch to survival and walk on it, then I get lit on fire basically immediately. So that's pretty cool. And then we can also check if I left click it. There you go. And then if I right click it, then we will get this as well. And as you can see for the output of this is called on the server thread because we've checked if re is remote basically to make sure that we are on the server. This is also only output on the server thread. So this is one more way that you can basically check, hey, uh, where am I actually? Am I on the client or on the server? Just make an output for example, would suffice in order to see where you are. And that's actually how easy it is to add an advanced item to Minecraft. And that would be it for this tutorial right here. I hope you liked it and you learned something new. I would, of course, appreciate a like if you did. And I will see you in the next video. So, yeah.